Hey guys, what's up? Um, the truth is, I can eat an entire large Layla Jones pizza by myself <laughs> with um, ranch and uh, Frank's red hot sauce. <laughs> That's real talk. So, thank you. Uh, so, sorry. So, I don't really know why I'm here. <laughs> to be honest with you, like, there's like crazy inspiring people here and like mad smart people here and I just like, you know, I make pad thai and fried rice and I flip burgers at my place at Pork Slope and make nachos. So um, when they asked me to be part of this, I was like, oh, okay. Um, shout out to Grace and Safan for um, kind of connecting me with Vivian for this. But um, so I'm Dale Taldi. Um, I am the chef and owner of Three Kings Restaurant Group. Um, we have three restaurants here in Brooklyn, Taldi, Pork Slope, and Thistle Hill Tavern. Um, we have one restaurant in Jersey City, Taldi, Jersey City, and one in Miami, um, Taldi, Miami. Um, so when they asked me, you know, like, what's next, um, I got real dark. Like, I got real dark. I was like, fuck, the man is trying to take every cent from me. I don't know why they're, char they're making tipped employees go to 750. They make so much money. I made eight bucks as a line cook and never got overtime. Um, <laughs> so it got crazy. I got real dark, but then I thought, this is not going to end well. Like, this is not the environment to me to get on my box and start talking about this. So. What's next for me is hopefully this, my story. Um, I'm a first generation Filipino, born and raised in Chicago. Get it? So born and raised in Chicago, but now living in New York, and my ten years in December. So I think I'm 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 part of New York. I'm part of New York City. Um, been in Brooklyn for five years, and we've opened Taldi Restaurant, and that's been open for like four years. So, um, and then Thistle Hole Tavern's been open for almost five and a half, six. So. You know, our restaurants here in Brooklyn, um, we love it here, my business partners and I. Um, but when we opened Taldi, we kind of didn't know what to call it, right? It's like, it's just this Asian, we want to call it modern Asian, just like every other stupid restaurant that's who knows where, right? It's like every restaurant, every Asian restaurant on the block that was open up, opening up from some 30-year-old kid was like, we're modern Asian. So our PR guy, who was a very good friend of ours, Kong Fan, said, why don't you just do you? And I was like, well, who am I? And I was like, well, I'm a Filipino American. And that's what we ran with. And for a lot, you know, for growing up as a Filipino American, it wasn't like I could turn on TV and be like, I want to be like that dude, because he's Filipino too. It was like, I turn on TV and be like, I want to be like Michael Jordan. And I want to be like Q-Tip. <laughs> and Fife, the brother abstract. Because that is like, that, that was, I couldn't see me anywhere. I didn't see it anywhere. So I felt like I had to attach myself to this culture. Um, and then growing up, as, growing up as a chef, I guess what was really hard for me was finding my voice through food. Um, it was almost kind of like, in, in, especially in, in, in cooking, there's this idea of like, the, nothing's original, right? You're kind of just taking someone else's idea and making your own, or, or, or you're stealing, you know, you're taking recipes and, you know, instead of orange juice, you're using lemon juice and calling your own. So, for me, um, finding my voice through food was very important, and it didn't happen until I got on a show called Top Chef, which you might remember me from, season four and season eight. Um, and I really started to learn, like, what define, what, when you're put in a position to cook in 30 minutes to, you know, make a dish in 30 minutes, you either fail really miserably or you succeed. There's very little middle ground. Like, you can look at a dish and be like, dude, that is awesome. I can't believe I made that in 30 minutes. Or you could look at it and be like, what did I just do? I want to crawl underneath this table and millions of people are going to see my failure on TV. Um, and it really gave me this chance to to find what my food was. And in creating Taldi in the brand, and we've put it into three different cities now, um, I started to find out who I was and what made my food my food. And it really started with the, my walk. And I, I tell people that a lot. It's, what is your walk? Is it to the 2-3? Is it to the 4-5? Is it down Houston? Is it down Flatbush Ave? Is it down Atlantic?
Because to me, that walk is what inspires me to cook. You know, when I, when I was definitely living on the Lower East Side, it was you pass by Russ and Daughters, um, and you're like, how do I? I love just Jewish delicatessen food. It's like my favorite thing ever. How do I involve that into my food being an Asian, a Filipino American? And it got weird. That got really weird. Because we are pork heavy. And that wasn't exactly the routine there. Um, but we made it work. Beets, calamansi juice, shea bonito flakes as, you know, like smoked white fish creme fraiche with Tobacco caviar. Those things, those, that thread started to happen. And then I started to become like, yo, you know what we could just do? We basically could do whatever we want because if your walk is through um, Williamsburg and you're going through the traditional Hasidic neighborhoods or you're going through Washington Heights and you're in, you know, you're amongst crazy Dominicans and it's mad loud, but like they got the illest rice and beans and that inspires me, and that inspired the food, and that inspired um, kind of what we termed as Asian American. So when they asked me what was next, I thought, hopefully my generation of chefs, um, you know, we're all a bunch of 30s. Like there was a, you know, 30-somethings, especially in the Asian, Asian American community, because when the Filipinos and the Asians came, you know, a lot of us came here, um, our parents came here with a green card, you know, a green card if they were in the healthcare system. So my mom was a registered nurse, she was a registered nurse, she got a green card to come work in America. And that's a lot of the story of my friends and my family, but also my fellow cooks, you know? And I feel like a lot of my fellow cooks and chefs who are in that generation, they attach themselves to something else. You know, whether it was like this crazy, stupid molecular gastronomy thing where people were putting foams and using eyedroppers to make food, or, you know, or they attach themselves to something very, you know, classic like Spanish food or something like, um, you know, very, Fr you know, Nouvelle cuisine, Nouvelle French cuisine. That's what we attach ourselves to instead of who we were, who our culture was. You know, I remember I tell a lot this story of my, yeah, I was in a Filipino basketball league, which was like five foot five and under, <laughs> but we were. Do not, do not mess with us. We had, a, we had a good squad. But every time we got done with practice, it was like, we're, it was funny because we also had every practice at a JCC, at a Jewish community center. And it was this strange mix of dudes playing basketball. But every time we got done eating, every time we got done with practice, it was like, where are we gonna go eat? We never wanted to eat Filipino food, never. It was always like, what's, immerse ourselves in American culture. Burgers, wings, pizza, fast food. And the minute, we, and the minute I left from, from, for New York, from Chicago, it was the one thing I sought out so hard. How do I, how do I eat my mom's food? So now, I feel like, it wasn't just me, but a lot of us are trying to take that, um, the nasty connotation of fusion out of that word, right? Fusion, fusion, fusion food. It's, it's not the, the Thai restaurant that also does sushi and Chinese food, and they don't do any of that well. You know, it's not the French guy who's married to a uh, Japanese woman and he's all of a sudden doing Japanese French food. It's not that. It's me. And a lot of my, a lot of the chefs that are first generations here who are trying to mix um, where they, where their parents are from and where they're from. Um, you know, I'm from Chicago, and I'll always rep that. I live in Brooklyn now, and I'll always rep, I, I rep that now. But there's, I try, I try. But we're from, you know, my parents are from the Philippines, and um, we, 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 we can't lose that. We won't lose that. So a lot of my counterparts and our chefs are, are trying to take that word and saying, hey, we're doing Asian American food, and we're trying to make that what's next. You know, whether you're Asian, whether, you're, um, whether it's Thai, Chinese, Vietnamese, Korean, or if you're from Africa, or it's 
you know, New Zealand, American, who, who knows? But as long as they're holding on to a little bit of where, where you're from and adding where you are, um, to me, that's, that to me is what's next. And, um, you know, as far as the businesses go, you know, we're sadly saying we would, we, we said this when we first opened our restaurants in Brooklyn, we would never go to Manhattan. But we are going to the dark side. <laughs> so we have two restaurants that are opening up in Manhattan, one on the Bowering Canal and one on release that's in Midtown, 31st between 5th and Madison. Um, and we're just trying to grind it out because this is not an easy business and support your local chef because th a, great a great New York City restaurant makes 20 cents on the dollar. Think about that, 20 cents out of the dollar. And most of us aren't and that's the sad thing is that you'll see in the coming years and the coming months Places are going to close because it's just the stress and how hard it is to keep businesses running in New York and in Brooklyn are just so heavy. It's great for you guys because it's that, as long as that person closes down, another person comes in and it's more options for you. It's just the independent operators are having a real tough time with it, though. But um, thank you.